I'm Mike Choi and today I'm going to be sharing with you the latest developments in cutting edge Nintendo exercise technology. But first, I'm going to tell you a couple fun facts about myself. One, I love Nintendo. And two, I hate exercise. In fact, the only way that you're ever going to get me to exercise is by wrapping physical activity inside of a thick layer of Nintendo. Now, don't get me wrong. Nintendo has tried many times over the years to get me to exercise by releasing fitness games with exercise accessories, or as I like to call them, exercises, to make physical activity more fun and engaging. In 2006, Nintendo released Wii Sports alongside the Wii Remote, which allowed you to feel like you were really playing tennis. In 2007, Nintendo released the Wii Balance Board alongside Wii Fit, which promoted a healthy lifestyle through proper diet and regular physical activity. More recently, Nintendo released the Rincon alongside Ring Fit Adventure, which finds creative ways to exercise every part of your body. And of course, who could forget Nintendo's latest offering, Jump Rope Challenge, which gives you all the exercise of jumping rope using just the Joy-Cons. Now, Nintendo's attempts have resulted in some pretty cool accessories over the years, but unfortunately, they've all failed to get me to stay active for more than just a few weeks at a time. That's why I decided it was time for me to create my own Nintendo exercise program, one that would be challenging and engaging and most of all, fun. That's why today I'm introducing, for the first time, the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit for the Nintendo Switch. The Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit is an exciting new way to exercise the entire body while playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Using our patented Tapo technology, you can control your cart by pedaling on the bike con and steering and shooting items with the ring con. The Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit will exercise every part of your body. Your arms, your core, your legs, and most importantly, your mind. There's no better way to stay fit from the comfort of your home. But you don't only need to stay at home, you can take the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit on the go in portable mode which allows you to play Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit anywhere, any place. Now, at this point, you may be asking yourself a few questions. What comes inside of the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit? How does the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit work? Let's start by unboxing the kit. The Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit comes with three critical components. The first component of the kit is the Bike Con, which is short for Bicycle Controller. The Bike Con is equipped with sensors that allows it to detect how quickly you're pedaling and translate that to your cart's acceleration in the game. The second part of the kit is the Ring Con. The Ring Con is used to steer your cart by tilting it left and right and shooting items by squeezing the sides together. Now, neither of these two parts can work without the third and most important part of the kit, and that's the Tapo module. The Tapo module is a small wireless robot that hugs your Joy-Con and presses specific buttons when it receives signal from the Ring Con and the Bike Con. The Tapo module is the heart of the Labo Fit Adventure Card Kit. So to see how it works in more detail, let's take a closer look. The Tapo module is designed to securely hug the Joy-Con and is equipped with small motorized arms that press the SL and A buttons. The module is powered by a small circuit containing a microcontroller, wireless chip, and rechargeable battery. The Tapo module works with the rest of the kit by attaching directly to the ring con and wirelessly communicating with the bike con. The bike con has a built-in sensor that tracks your speed as you pedal. If your pedaling speed ever exceeds a specific threshold, the bike on will send a signal to the TAPO module to begin pressing the acceleration button. If your speed ever falls below that threshold, the TAPO module will let go of the acceleration button and your cart will stop moving. The ring con is equipped with a sensor that detects when you squeeze the sides together. Squeezing the ring con sends a signal to the TAPO module to press the item button. The ring con can be held in the squeezing position to hold an item behind you when you want to defend yourself from rear attacks with a banana or a shell. 
The Rincon is also used as a steering wheel to move your cart left and right using intuitive tilt controls. And that's a closer look at how the TAPO module works. Now that you've seen all the pieces of the kit, we're going to put them all together and see it in action in Mario Kart. The first step of setting up the LaboFit Adventure Kart Kit is to install the Joy-Con onto the TAPO module by sliding it into place and activating the slide lock. The TAPO module then attaches to the Rincon by sliding onto the rail just like a normal Joy-Con. We also need to connect the Rincon cable into the corresponding port on the TAPO module. Once that's done, the next step is to carefully mount the bike con and prepare yourself mentally and physically for an intense session of exercise. Now that we have everything installed, the best way to demonstrate the Labo Fit Adventure Card Kit is by playing an uncontrolled online match against complete strangers. Ooh, we're playing against Hank Hill. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna let Hank Hill know that I'm using tilt controls and that I'm excited to play with him. I'm gonna start pedaling now so that as soon as the race starts, I'm already accelerating. Alright, as you can see I'm using the Rincon as a steering wheel and that's because it's using the native Joy-Con tilt controls. Oh. Alright, here we go. Now we got items. What are we gonna get? Alright, so now that I have a mushroom, I can use it by squeezing on the Rincon. As you can see, it's only the first part of the race, and I'm already out of breath, which says more about me than it does about the Labo Fit Adventure Card Kit. Oh man, it's not still my mushrooms. Come on. Now, the thing about the golden mushroom is that it's quite a workout because you have to squeeze the ring con many times. Oh no! Give me the star. I'm gonna lose. No! Okay. Whew. See, the thing about the Lava Fit Adventure Card Kit is even when you lose in the game, you're winning at exercise. After watching that riveting Mario Kart 8 footage, you may be wondering, are there any other games that I can play with the Labo Fit Adventure Kart Kit? The answer is yes. Let's try playing the popular Nintendo fighting game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate using the Labo Fit Adventure Kart Kit. Now keep in mind, the only two buttons I can press are the A button and the L button. And so I am at somewhat of a disadvantage when it comes to Smash Bros. But we're going to give it my best shot. Ooh, we're playing against Ganondorf. Alright. Hey, what's up Ganondorf? Come here. Come here. Let me grab you. Let me grab you. Okay, first off goes to Ganondorf. strategy involves just pressing the A button and the L button, you're going to do great. That's been a quick look at how the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit works in Smash Bros. Back to you. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, oh, okay, I get it. It's a exercise kit for the Nintendo Switch that will revolutionize the way that I think about exercise. What else? Well, let me tell you what else. Alongside the Labo Fit Adventure Card Kit, we'll also be releasing this limited edition amiibo of Tapo, the official mascot of Tapo. The Tapo amiibo has a removable Joy-Con that's held in via magnets. 
you can just remove the Joy-Con by sliding it out. Then, once he's all done resting, you just slide the Joy-Con right back in and it just clicks back into place because of magnets. At this point, you may be asking yourself, how was the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit made? Well, luckily for you, I recorded every step of the process. So let's go on the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit journey together. Let's begin our journey by talking about the design of the Labo Fit Adventure Cart Kit. Starting with the TAPO module. By far the most complex part of the system is the TAPO module. When designing it, I had to take into account a lot of aspects of how it would connect to the Joy-Con as well as the rest of the system. Luckily, I know a thing or two about connecting to Joy-Cons. For the bike con sensor, I decided to use an infrared tachometer that would detect your pedaling speed. For the ring con sensor, I decided to attach a little flex sensor to the inside of the ring to detect squeezing. This sensor is similar to the one in the power glove that detects how hard you're bending your fingers. Now that the TAPO module and the rest of the kit is designed, it's time to head to the mecha shelf to begin the sacred act of fabrication. Our first stop on the fabrication journey is the 3D printer I'll be using to print the housing for the TAPO module. This is a resin printer, which means that instead of shooting molten plastic layer by layer, it creates parts by dropping this plate into a vat of UV curable liquid plastic. Once the plate is submerged, a UV light show is projected onto the bottom, which cures each layer of the print until you're left with your finished part. This process is called stereolithography, and it's great for creating smooth parts that are easy to sand and paint later. The part is still covered in quite a bit of excess resin, so to remove that I'm going to put the part inside of this automated isopropyl alcohol bath. It's fun to watch the hypnotic motion of the part circulating in the isopropyl alcohol, but the fumes aren't good for you so you shouldn't do this for very long. Now that we've removed all the excess resin, the next step is to bake the part with a combination of heat and UV light to increase its strength and durability. The curing chamber sold by the 3D printer company is quite expensive, so I hacked this one together using a toaster oven that I got off of Craigslist, some mirrors, UV LEDs, and this turntable that I hacked together myself. Here's what the part looks like before I go in with a pair of flush cutters to remove all the supports. I'm adding some threaded brass inserts to ensure that we have strong attachment points for all the things that are going to need to attach to this main housing. Now not everything on the TAPO module is 3D printed. Some of the geometry is just two-dimensional, so it's better off made using a laser cutter, which is a really fast way to churn out two-dimensional parts. Because this laser is actively vaporizing the plastic, it's important to protect yourself from the fumes that it generates. I've invested in a nice two-part ventilation system that protects my lungs from those nasty VOCs. Speaking of nasty VOCs, our next stop is the Mecha booth, where I'll be painting all the parts. The first step is to apply a layer of primer to all the parts to ensure that the paint coats stick extra well. For the color coats, I'm going to be using these Tamiya rattle cans that come in fun colors like brilliant blue, light green, and camel yellow. All of this painting is being done outdoors while using a respirator to prevent myself from inhaling any of the paint fumes. For the clear coat, I'm going to be using this can of Mr. Hobby Mr. Super Smooth Clear UV Cut Matte. This last step will help protect the parts while giving each of them a consistent surface finish that's worthy of the Mr. Super Smooth Clear name. Next up is the electronics for the TAPO module, which include this Teensy microcontroller, which is the brains of the operation, this XB wireless chip, which is going to allow everything to talk to each other, and finally this SparkFun adapter board that's going to make it really easy to connect these two parts. I'm going to be making two different versions of this basic board, one that goes inside of the TAPO module and one that goes inside of the BikeCon. Once the boards are done, there's some intense programming involved to make sure that they can send and receive signals to the motors and the rest of the kit. Now that I'm done making everything, it's time to assemble. The first step is to start assembling things inside of the main housing. I'm going to start with this green piece, which is the item arm, which will press the SL button to shoot items. The arm is spring-loaded so that it returns to its original position after hitting the button. Next, I need to install the servo motor, which is responsible for pulling the arm down when it receives signal from the main board. 
The acceleration arm is similar to the item arm, but oriented in a different direction. But before I can put the servo in for that one, I need to install this cable that will allow the ring con to attach directly to the TAPO module. I designed this hole so that the connector would sit Mr. Super Smooth Flush once it's fully installed. Once the last servo is in place, it's time to close up the main housing by installing this clear cover that I laser cut. This cover stays in place by screwing into the threaded inserts that are embedded inside of the housing. These arms on the bottom that help keep the Joy-Con in place also screw into the threaded inserts. I also designed this slide lock to help keep the Joy-Con from moving out of place during an intense turn. The next step is to install all the electronics, like the power switch, battery, and the circuit board that I made earlier. Once that's all installed, the next step is to attach the servos to the main circuit by connecting these little cables. The final step is to attach this rail, which is going to allow the TAPO module to physically slide onto the Rincon like a normal Joy-Con. And now the TAPO assembly is complete. Now that we've finished assembling the TAPO module, we need to make sure it's fully functional by running a few tests. The first test is to make sure that the Joy-Con fits by sliding it into place and making sure that it's nice and snug. Now we need to test how the module fits with the ring con. It should be able to slide on easily, but also feel secure and not wiggle around when you're shaking the ring con. I also need to attach this little connector to that port on the side of the TAPO module. Once I move the switch to the on position, the TAPO module should be able to detect when the ring con is being squeezed. As you can see here, the movement is quite subtle, but the motors make an audible noise when they move to press the item button. It's much easier to see what's happening through the switch button testing menus, where you can see that squeezing the ring con clearly shows up as an SL button press. Now that that works, the next step is to test that the TAPO module can talk to the bike con. But since I haven't made the Bicon yet, I'm just going to have to use the raw Bicon circuit. The Bicon circuit is using this infrared tachometer that can detect how quickly the pedal is moving past it. For now, I'm going to use my finger to emulate the pedal's movement. Once the movement frequency exceeds the threshold that I set in software, the Bicon circuit should send a signal to the TAPO module to press the acceleration button, which you can see here. If the movement frequency falls below that threshold, the Bicon circuit will alert the TAPO module to let go of the acceleration button. And with that, the TAPO module has passed all of our functional tests and is ready to go. But before we can use it, we need to give the Bicon circuit a home. It's now time to make the protective cardboard housing for the Bicon, which also houses the Bicon circuit. This process involved a lot of trial and error with measuring and folding and cutting and then folding and then measuring again to ensure that the cardboard would fit snugly without interfering with the motion of the pedals. The Bicon gets embedded into a groove that's cut into the side of the cardboard housing, and it's placed so that the pedal moves right in front of the infrared tachometer. Once the final touches are added to give it an authentic Labo feel, the Bicon is ready to roll. That means that the Labo Fit Adventure Card Kit is finally complete. But there's still one part of the fabrication journey that we have yet to cover. The Tapo Amiibo followed a similar fabrication journey to the Tapo module itself. I 3D printed most of the base parts, and I embedded magnets inside of the body and the Joy-Con to create the magnetic attach feature. Then I returned to the Mecha booth to prime and paint all the Amiibo parts using the same colors I used for the TAPO module. This would ensure that the Amiibo would really evoke the true spirit of TAPO. Once all the parts are done drying, it's time to assemble them into a fully featured Amiibo. There are features in all of the different body parts to make sure that they all connect with each other nice and securely. For the base of the Amiibo, I laser cut this branding emblem on the bottom where I selectively masked the lettering, and then I sprayed it with Mr. Hobby Mr. Super Smooth Clear UV Cut Matte. 
This technique results in a really cool effect where the letters are shiny but the rest of the emblem is matte. Once that's done, the Tapo Amiibo can be assembled onto the base. Now, although you can't see them, there's magnets on the inside of the body of the Amiibo that allow it to attach to this Joy-Con, which has its own magnets that are embedded on the back. So the Tapo Amiibo is officially complete. But no Amiibo is truly complete without its own custom packaging. So I designed some packaging graphics, and then had them printed on high quality photo paper which I then cut to size. I then spray mounted those graphics to a thin piece of laser cut acrylic which I designed to be the exact size of an amiibo cardboard back. For the clear covering on the front of the amiibo packaging, I removed the cover from an existing amiibo and then painstakingly cleaned and removed every bit of adhesive and residue from the lip. Once that's done, I then attach the cover to the backing that I made earlier using invisible double-sided tape. And that's how I made the packaging for the Tapo Amiibo. Even though this Amiibo doesn't do anything in any games, it was really fun to make and pay attention to all the little details like the packaging and the text on the bottom, as well as the magnetic attach feature. Magnets are cool. That concludes our exhaustive look into how the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit was made. Now at this point, you may still be asking yourself, is the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit real? The answer is yes. Everything that you saw in the video, including the Tapo module and the Bicon, actually work the way that I described. I've been using the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit for the past month or so to actually exercise. And although it is difficult, it is pretty fun and engaging, as I hoped it would be. But, for many obvious reasons, I don't have any plans to sell or productize the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit. For now, it's just a concept for a product that would be really, really cool that I decided to hack together a prototype for. Over the past couple years, Nintendo has shown that they're willing to experiment with the Mario Kart idea. For instance, they added Nintendo Labo support to Mario Kart. They also created those Mario Kart remote control cars. So it's not entirely out of the question that they could implement something like this in the future. Nintendo actually has all the pieces that they need to achieve essentially the same solution that I've achieved with the Labo Fit Adventure Car Kit. Ring Fit Adventure comes with this elastic leg strap that you can attach a Joy-Con to. In Ring Fit Adventure, it's used to detect when you're running in place or when you're doing any number of leg exercises. But it's not out of the question for Nintendo to add support for this leg strap in Mario Kart and use it to detect when you're running in place or when you're pedaling on a bike, and then use that to make it so that your kart accelerates when it detects either of those motions. Nintendo could even use the Ring Con for tilt controls and for shooting items the way that I do in this video. This would be a pretty slick way for Nintendo to add extra exercise functionality to Mario Kart if they wanted to. I have no doubt in my mind that they've already had the idea of controlling Mario Kart with an exercise bike, but they probably haven't implemented it yet because of safety concerns or some other kind of reason, which is why I decided to make it myself. Nevertheless, I hope Nintendo considers adding this sort of functionality to Mario Kart because I think it's a really fun idea. That's all the time I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the Labo Fit Adventure Kart Kit and how it came to be. If you did, consider giving this video a thumbs up and sharing it with a friend. I have a lot of fun hardware projects planned for the very near future and if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more footage of me using the Lava Fit Adventure Car Kit and trying to beat people online, you can check out my Twitch channel where I'll probably stream me using it a couple times. Until next time, I'm Mike Choi, and thank you for watching.